hi everyone, I'm Chris and in this tutorial we're going to be following on from the previous spline cage modeling tutorial and we are going to refine this shape just a little bit more and add a little bit more detail to it. So let's continue on from where we left off. We have our basic hull shape. Now we're going to add some detail to the rear end first of all and what we're going to add is a little shuttle launch bay so what we're going to do is we're going to bring this curve down so we've got a flat end over here and we're going to do that by refining our spline cage a little bit so with your object selected come back off of surface mode back down to your line and in the perspective mode we are going to draw another circle around here so make sure you know what's what so you can go round in a circle and you don't end up clicking on the wrong ones back into vertex section mode click on connect click on refine and then begin to draw now again this only needs to be rough on the way round because we'll tidy it up once we get to the top and there we go now I'm going to line mine up very very roughly but again, if you're doing this sort of thing, you'll be using reference planes. So you'll be able to line yours up a lot neater. There we go. And back on surface modifier, you can see we now have a similar shape still. But we've now got this extra segment we can work with in here. Now, when we're working on this, if you prefer, you can check the show end result and you'll be able to see it the surface on and we get this orange cage round so we can actually continue working on it at the sub object mode so to get this shape what I'm going to do is I am going to select this one at the back here I'm going to bring it down a lot flatter like so this one on the top which is the next one in going to bring that across I right click on it and I'm actually going to turn it to a bezier corner and what I'm going to do is just pull this in and down a bit same here I'm going to select this and the one below it I'm going to bring those roughly up to level there we go bring these back and now we have a bit more of a defined shape on the rear of it there this is where you really need to be confident with working in a 3D environment otherwise this can get quite confusing and, and can also be quite frustrating if you don't get it right so I'm just tidying mine up a little bit okay I'm happy with that shape. Now, when we look at our lines here, we can see that we have the nice curve that we want going on in this viewport. But if we look in the front and the top, we can see something is out of line here. What we're going to need to do is tidy this up. So we need to work out which one it is. The best method for this is to just highlight them all. And then you can see one of the angles is off in a direction that it shouldn't be. So all we're going to do is bring that back in and that will tidy that up for us now just one other quick thing we're going to create this little section in the front and that quite simply all we're going to do is we're going to take this vertice at the front here which is here and we're going to pull it back behind this vertice so if we pull it in you can see we're starting to get the right shape here however it's not quite right and that is again because of the vertices so if we select this change this to a bezier corner and top and bottom ones as well check they are bezier corners first problem we see is this one here if we turn this surface modifier off is this line here so I'm going to bring that one out a bit just to give it a nice curve and this one here doesn't match the top one so I'm just going to bring that one in until it does bring this out 
just to get the nice curve that I want. And then same again from top viewport to make sure these curves match and are the way I want. Now this one isn't. I want to see it like that. And like that. We turn the surface modifier back on. We have something a little bit closer to what I'm after. Just like that, in under 20 minutes, we've created a rather complex shape and then we've edited it. This method of modeling is actually a really easy way to model and gives you a great control over complex models and how many polygons you end up with at the end of it. In this one, you can see this patch topology here, I have set to 25, which is quite a high value. It gives you a lot smoother curves and it also adds a lot more polygons. So if we were to turn the statistics on, this one, and convert this object to an editable poly with the steps at 25, you can see our polys is 13,520. If we were to control Z and put the steps down to 5 and then convert this to an editable poly, you can see now we only have 720 polygons. So it's entirely up to you how smooth you want your model to look and how many polygons you want. That's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments. Thank you very much.